I wanted to kind of appreciate your attendance. Our goal is bring uh, wisdom to the group of attendees and actually for the uh, panelists to share with each other too. To go over who's involved this discussion, Bob Langridge, Regional uh, Director of Styles, having been with them for over 30 years, uh, very up to speed on the automation really all over the United States and the globe. Kent Swenson is a uh, entrepreneur, has his own uh, cabinet shop, has deployed many CNC uh, pieces of equipment, many, many applications of software, stays up with the, uh, the battle of trying to keep the company current at the same time, not get overly uh, ex expensed in technology. Matt Bush is a senior executive at RB Woodcraft. He uh, directs the engineering and has deployed many types of engineering products in the uh, architectural woodwork and uh, store fixture and case goods market. Here's myself. I founded uh, Roger Shaw and Associates. I've been dealing with software solutions for over 20 years. And Sean Mayberry is our CEO at RSA Solutions. Uh, Sean has a brilliant mind, listens closely to what the market wants and tries to get the technology that they're asking for from our suppliers. The way the uh, seminar is gonna go, we're gonna go in the same order. Bob will go first, Kent second, Matt third, and then along the way, uh, I've invited them to ask Sean what uh, software or what technology uh, related to their presentation that they want him to show, and then Sean uh, will show you that technology. Um, this is not about us trying to sell software, even though that's kind of our DNA. Uh, this is really about having a heart-to-heart -heart, uh, about what kind of pressure we're all under because of all of these changes coming at us uh, with the Internet of Things and not, not billions of hookups, but trillions of hookups to the Internet in the next four or five years and how that's going to affect us and the technology, the controllers, everything is changing so fast. Uh, just a, just a, a conversation, take a deep breath, and let's see where we're at and what kind of decisions we need to be anticipating. So with that, Bob, uh, I'll pass the uh, baton to you, uh, and if you need something shown, let us know. Well, thank you, Roger. I uh, appreciate the opportunity here. This is uh, one of the first webinars I've done, so it's quite interesting. and. Uh, it's uh, embracing the new technology that's out there. What I'd like to do is, is really kind of just give you some highlights of what I'm seeing out there in the industry. And uh, from a technology standpoint and from an automation standpoint, uh, as Roger stated, I've been with the company at Styles for 34 years and uh, really have seen a, uh, an advancement of, of the industry and an advancement of the equipment over the years as well. And, and looking at it as a, as a snapshot here, I mean, when you look back in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, the focus back then uh, was more the high volume, you know, the, 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 the more products of the same type product you manufacture uh, in, in a quicker format, the better off you were. Uh, when you look in the early 2000s, uh, some of the uh, computers and CNC technology was focusing on you know, uh, quicker changeover, uh, more automation. Uh, looking at uh, uh, 2008 is really when, when the recession hit. Uh, everything from a, an advancement in technology was put on hold and was more of a survival type uh, mode for all of us uh, during those times. Uh, in 2012, uh, 2013, we started coming out of the recession and uh, the focus then from a uh, manufacturing standpoint was really taking a look at flexibility, uh, doing more with less equipment and less labor out there. Uh, taking a look at today, uh, taking a look at some of your customers' needs out there, some of their wants and some of their demands. You know, what are customers demanding out there? Um, I, I came up with a, a quick list of, of five or six items. Uh, one of the things that I think are on top of the list is, is quicker delivery. Uh, customers are are uh, looking at zero tolerance for late shipments. Uh, customers like to wait till the last minute before they decide to order a product of yours, I'm sure. And 
and when they do order it, they want it now. So delivery is 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 a critical uh, challenge for all of us out there. Uh, product variety. I'm sure that all of you guys are experiencing a wide range of a product variety out there, uh, different textures, different colors. Uh, uh, one of the trends we're seeing out there is textured melamines, and that's uh, throwing a challenge in the manufacturing process as well. Uh, I'm sure that all your customers are also looking at uh, lower cost, uh, but also looking for a higher, higher quality. So. These are all demands uh, that uh, your customers, I'm sure, are looking at from you. And uh, what that is doing for us is really uh, driving the industry uh, to take a look at uh, several key items. And these kind of key items are uh, flexibility. Uh, this is what I hear on a regular basis is customers looking for equipment that is highly flexible. Uh, they're also looking at equipment that is uh, capable of manufacturing lower bat sizes, bat size one. Uh, they're looking for equipment that is a smaller footprint, takes up less, less space in their facilities, and uh, uh, has the maximum amount of up output. Uh, they're also looking for equipment that is uh, less uh, operator dependent, and uh, also can operate with uh, material handling, and simpler to maintain equipment, and uh, also uh, able to communicate uh, 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 from a manufacturing standpoint, uh, back to the office. So these uh, industry trends and uh, industry demands is really having a big impact on our machine technology that we're coming out with. Uh, over the last few years, I think uh, I think uh, we've all seen that uh, when it comes from a mechanical standpoint, uh, machines have kind of leveled off as far as the ability. Uh, the speeds, the design of the machines themselves, and uh, there's less uh, new advancements in, in machinery, but uh, there are smaller uh, innovations as far as little things that have a big difference in, in the equipment itself. Um, you're seeing more CNC uh, incorporated into the machines. Uh, you're also seeing more interface. Uh, customers are demanding uh, the equipment to be able to interface, whether it be barcode printing or barcode reading, and then also uh, material handling options as well. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers out there, uh, especially the homemade group, are developing uh, machine controls out there that uh, really have the capability of interfacing not only between the machines themselves, but able to interface uh, back to the office and throughout the manufacturing process. And this is key. I think this is one of the, the big areas that uh, the next, uh, let's say, the next uh, playing field or the next competitive edge for customers out there is that uh, it, is, it is no longer uh, how fast, you know, the machines can run uh, independently. It's, it's really how the machines can communicate and pass on information uh, between themselves and back to the office. And this is a game changer. Uh, equipment out there, have, uh, from, a, from a machinery and technology standpoint, has, has advanced to a point where it, it's leveling off. And the next uh, ability for you to be competitive out there is the, uh, really the information. Uh, the information on the, on the material flowing through your factory, uh, the information going back uh, to the office as well. And uh, we're seeing a lot of this um, advancement in information and communication really being driven out of Europe. Um, like I said, the equipment, uh, whether it's uh, supplier A or supplier B, the individual machines can process the product uh, about the same speed nowadays, but it's what, what, what key here is, is how the material comes to the equipment and how the material leaves equipment and what's the next process. And uh, what we're seeing out of Europe is, is more of a what we call a, a balanced manufacturing process. And what that is is that it utilizes software and material handling solutions in order to balance uh, manufacturing from the beginning when the jobs are released to the production flow 
to the end to when the product is loaded onto the truck. And it's the balancing process really that, that is key and really is the competitive edge of manufacturing at a lower cost, less labor, and more efficiently. And I'm sure that Sean will touch upon some of the uh, some of the software end of it, some of the the uh, systems that are in place from software in order to manage that better. But what we're seeing out out there from a, a equipment supplier is there's a, a lot of focus now on how do we get product from a material handling flow standpoint from the beginning of the manufacturing process to the end, and some of the uh, items or equipment solutions that you've seen probably and heard about out there recently is you know these storage and retrieval systems that are becoming very popular out there. Uh, we actually have one at the IWF show that will be uh, demonstrated, but uh, there's solutions for material handling of the product itself. Uh, storage and retrieval systems that can manage uh, raw sheet material, can store it, uh, inventory it, inventory it and then automatically load it on either to a saw or to a router and uh, what that does is it eliminates labor, uh, eliminates the damaged parts, uh, lost uh, parts and what it also does is that it keeps material flowing through the manufacturing process. Uh, we're also seeing more uh, robotics being incorporated into the manufacturing process that that are are consistently timed for feeding and offloading of material onto the equipment. And then also uh, we're seeing automated buffer systems between the equipment in order to manage the product as it exits the machine, uh, stores the product until it's ready to be processed, whether it's edge banding or machining or finishing. And there's a lot of development uh, from that end of it as well. Another area that uh, we're seeing uh, as far as what's driving some of the automation and uh, technology out there is really is really the uh, personnel, the issues that uh, everybody's incurring as far as finding uh, good people, good operators, good production people. And I'm sure that, uh, that you guys are probably challenged with that on a day-to-day -day basis. It's something that's not going to get any better. Uh, I think it's going to get a lot worse. And trying to find uh, well-trained, well-motivated individuals is is something that I think is going to be hard to find out there in our industry and in anybody's industry. So, what we're doing from a manufacturing standpoint, or from a machinery standpoint, I should say, is really trying to look at ways to design and manufacture equipment that is more intuitive, uh, less uh, operator dependent, and uh, is, is a smarter piece of equipment that uh, requires less operator intervention. Um, we are uh, and continue to, to look at the ways to, let's say, uh, avoid uh, machines from crashing themselves from uh, operator error, error uh, machines that recognize parts when they come to the machine, when they leave the machines, and then also um, monitor the amount of parts that are being run, uh, the amount of downtime, the amount of uptime, to really to be able to communicate that uh, back to uh, other machinery let's say down the manufacturing process, but also communicate that back up to the office so that there's a balance of manufacturing uh, throughout the, uh, the manufacturing process. Um, in summary, um, it's really not how fast we can produce the parts. Uh, it, it's, it's more uh, how we can communicate and, and and uh, balance the manufacturing process throughout the, the factory uh, from order entry to arrival of finished product to your customer. Uh, uh, Sean, I, I don't know if you want to kind of maybe touch upon some of the uh, communication aid tools that are out there that are being, being utilized now. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Uh, thanks, uh, Bob. Appreciate uh, 
um, all that you said and the wisdom that you bring uh, to this. It's great to get a, a perspective from not just a um, not just a manufacturer, not just a software, but also for uh, because your company leads in uh, automation technology. I, I certainly would be glad to show anything that uh, we might want to see. Uh, just as a quick example of some following up of some of what uh, Bob has talked about um, would be that ability to manage uh, production activities going from the time that we've engineered a project all the way to the, the floor. And so just as a um, brief example, I am uh, have my screen uh, visible, I believe, to you on the left-hand side. These are just some active work orders in my system. Um, if you have one selected, it shows you the items that are within it. That uh, shows you the loose items that could be done. So just real quick, if you wanted to be able to see where something is, and it's as simple as being able to see the operations that it's fully or partially been through, the progress of the overall work order, the kinds of data and information that you might want to be able to make available to everybody on the uh, shop floor. Uh, so whether it's the subassemblies to be created or all of the hardware applications, those kind of things done, even to the point of being able to just you know, scan a barcode of a part and be able to see um, where it lives within the assembly, the highlighted part, uh, details of able to create um, automated uh, damage part alerts, uh, being able to just make decisions, including, if I back out of this, where uh, things are. So being able to make a, a move across this, I'll change just as an example to say, hey, you know what, this has been scanned for shipping, so we'll take these guys and, and tell it that we want to uh, do that. So that's going to give us nice things like the ability to view and get verification of everything that's made it on to the truck, not just the uh, cabinets or those kinds of things, but uh, also items that might make up kits, as well as um, being able to uh, ensure so we can see this report just came up, and so now we can see that we have electronic verification of this pack, and it can see that we're supposed to ship 10 items. We still have four of them that haven't been scanned on yet, and that's just because uh, these um, haven't uh, changed in status. So you could have a configured system that as you wanted the, the kit or whatever it is, that then it would um, make its way in. So you'll see if we change its status to ship that as if we're scanning this kind of a deal, that then the report for doing so is going to let us know that everything made it um, onto the truck uh, perfect. So that gives us a uh, that gives us an example of uh, just a few of the things that Bob highlighted on. This just the attempt to show was just about all of the uh, tools and processes that are now available in the market. Pretty new technology to be able to do these kind of things and help uh, maintaining a systems. And and I just would concur with him that certainly what we hear in the industry. The uh, storage and retrieval, stu uh, you know, um, applications. The IntelliStore is definitely people want compact. They want fast. They want it to load at night. They want nice. They want to be able to track and know that everything's done. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. Thanks, Sean. Um, uh, the the next speaker that we have is Kent Swenson. Uh, Kent, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. So uh, I'm uh, a partner in Timberline in Manhattan, Kansas. Over the years, I've developed systems and methods that have basically gotten me to the point where I'm out of the daily flow of operation of the business. Um, I do my current tasks. I participate in project handoffs from estimating um, to, to engineering and project matters. Uh, I also, in the final drawing approval for submittal drawings prior to them being submitted, and on the final drawing approval uh, for projects before they actually hit uh, engineering ready to go to production. So by having my, my finger on those three things, it kind of keeps me in touch with what we're doing, how we're doing it, and what's coming down the pike here so I can identify issues before they become issues. I also have developed our existing uh, CAD CAM system library and and continue to maintain that. So that's that's my keeping the wheels from falling off our system duties on a, on a daily basis. Beyond that, I focus on the future of our business and the systems and the enhancements that need to be made both to how we do what we do as well as uh, physical shop floor functioning and, and office processes. 
it's a constant search for better methods, uh, better software, better systems, and better processes. The big focus for me for the last year and a half probably has been uh, how do we improve uh, how we do what we do. In the office, primarily, that is our biggest struggle. And I've come to the conclusion that there's, there's two things that we have got to get our hands wrapped around and get in control or, or we're not going to thrive in our business. We're only going to survive if we're lucky. So those two things are that we need a very powerful centralized data management system that is both collecting data and generating data about how we're doing what we're doing. And the second portion of that is a, a very powerful centralized engineering and CAD CAM system. Without either one of those things, we're going to fail miserably. We're to the point now that we can physically produce more than we can manage. And, and without the ability to successfully manage projects, we all know that we just end up with a giant chaotic mess. So that being said, there's, there's about four areas that, that need to be addressed or explored in my opinion. Uh, the Internet of Things, we're just beginning to explore uh, the connections between individual machines and uh, software. Like Sean and Bob mentioned, um, I see the IntelliStore type systems where the system is receiving the materials, inventorying it, keeping track of inventory, uh, generating the, the rainbow stacks of, of material that are used to generate a particular work order and then feeding uh, either the saw or the router. Um, and also then tying individual work centers, benches, and cells, so that the work that's being done in each area, uh, like is demonstrated in the, the production coach, uh, we can kind of keep track visually at any time on my screen where a project is in production without having to go ask the production manager where it's at, without having to go take a tour around the shop floor. I can see at a moment's notice uh, where things are at. The other thing that I see that's really important is multitasking. Most people that we have that work for us that, that physically are managing projects and, and how we do what we do, there's just too many things that, that they are required to do on a daily basis that it's just almost impossible. As a matter of fact, it is impossible to keep track of it all. I've been exploring and, and we're in the early stages of implementing uh, automation triggers in our various pieces of software so that when a certain task or needs to be performed or or an event happens that needs somebody's attention, that triggers an, an alert that's either emailed to them or texted to them, uh, whether it's a damaged part or whether it's incomplete shipments or uh, all the materials are on hand to actually begin production. Those are things that we really struggle with trying to keep track of today. Um, so I believe that that will help greatly increase the ability of, of our employees to do more in the same amount of time. Uh, the other thing that we really struggle with are islands of information. We currently have too many independent pieces of software and they're all disconnected. They're not sharing information. There's no, there's no back and forth. We're entering the same data in multiple places. Uh, it gets out of sync. It's just a, a mess. So that's something that we desperately need to tie together. So we're working to reduce the number of individual software platforms that are involved and to establish interconnection links between the software platforms that are left. And then once again, we're, we're working on implementing that master data management collection system that's going to be the, the brains, the control of all of the system. And the last thing that I see that's a, a challenge for us, and these are all for the future going forward, the profitability of our business, is this batch one pursuit. Um, I see equipment being an absolutely critical, pivotal point to that. But it's only half of the battle, in my opinion. Um, we also have to reconfigure our processes in manufacturing so that we're able to keep up with pace and the rate of, of workflow that's got to happen. And without the software that's driving the system, whether it's at the management end of it or the engineering end of it, they both play a pivotal, critical role. And, and without either one of them, we're going to fall flat on our face. What I've come away with after the last year and a half of really intense study is that we have got to have that central data collection and management software, which would be at the highest level an ERP system, and if you step down a level, it would be an MRP system, and we have to have a very flexible, powerful engineering system. So we are in the process of implementing WoodCAD CAM to handle all of our one-off, which I tend to think of as this one-piece flow primarily having that effect. 
where we're doing custom one one off items that we'll never do again. We have to be able to very quickly and efficiently engineer them so that we can then produce them in the shop. So those are our challenges. We're just at the very end of the of the investigation process of all this. Like I said, for the last year and a half, I've been focused pretty heavily on it. We're just now beginning to actually start to implement some of these changes and and go forward. Um, it's a daunting task. I'm very excited about the opportunities that we have, and I look forward to seeing how it all turns out. Thanks a lot, Ken. I appreciate your, your input and uh, wisdom uh, and dedication to trying to stay ahead of the wave rather than catch up to it. John, did you want to show them uh, some of the capabilities of the uh, batch of one that, that's available out there? Sure, I'll be glad to. to use. I think it's important to know uh, the, the kind of technology from Germany that's coming our way. Okay, very good. Uh, Sean back here again. Um, just so, because we have a short amount of time, um, I'll just uh, create something uh, brand new. This, this is just um, to give you a few concepts within the software since we've only got a couple of uh, minutes and we want to leave plenty of time for Matt to be able to uh, share uh, his wisdom as well. I'm just going to quickly use AutoCAD to create some kind of something here real fast. I just typed in some dimensions. The only thing I'm making is an AutoCAD shape so that you have something to be able to look at. And I'll tell this that I want to close this. I've got to move my go to meeting stuff real fast. Okay, very good. We're ready to go. So the only thing I did was made a shape. Uh, we'll call this webcast. I could save the profile of this. I'm going to tell this that I'm making, which could be a, a plan or a side view, but I'm going to tell it that I want to make an object that this happens to be the front view of the um, object just to see uh, the kinds of speed that are required for being able to do custom one-off uh, production in today's uh, environment. I just built some uh, parts and pieces so we have uh, sides, tops, bottoms, backs, that kind of stuff. And so let's take this and control the way that we might want this to behave for a moment. So we want to be able to add to this the ability to throw in things like partitions. Just to give you a couple examples, let's throw in a set of drawers over in the left-hand side of this. Let's come to the right-hand side of this and tell this that we want to be able to apply it with some adjustable shelves and go out and go grab a principle for how it's going to be divided up. See this? Notice that the software was smart enough already to calculate and figure out that even this opening being different, that it needed to have uh, parts and pieces. So it really requires, first of all, primarily a software that's, that's parametric in and of itself, not the data. And so if I if I say that I want to go ahead with this, I could either save it back to my library, it would be a fully parametric uh, product, or I'll just say no and use it in this uh, one environment. As we begin to show or display what's, um, what's available here, you'll see that we have, move my views and auto event, so we'll see that we have now built this object that's completely manufacturing uh, ready you know, all the drawers, all the hardware, all the machining, all that kind of stuff is completely uh, done for us. However, just to give you an example of why I say that we need to have the kinds of tools to work this way, is that we can't spend a bunch of time to engineer something and then have a change that disrupts or causes the need um, to almost have to start over. So I'm going to tell this that I want to be able to grab this and I want to be able to edit, as an example, the original contour that we're working with. And so notice that I can even change that original AutoCAD shape on the fly. So not just type width and depth. And those kinds of things are working and behaving literally in a uh, moment's notice. We also have the ability, of course, in the um, opportunity to use AutoCAD to do some tremendous things. I just created the shape of a circle as an example here. I want to be able to go out and select, in this case, just a couple of parts for you, and we'll get um, this uh, working. So we're going to tell this that we want to send this through this part and this part. So all I'm doing at this moment is being able to say I need to be able to do specialized machining that otherwise I couldn't easily describe in data. And so now we'll see that we have through cutouts, through multi-parts and stuff. So really quick, fast, and very, very flexible for engineering a solution for custom one-off production. I mean, cabinets are easy, right? Everybody can do cabinets. So anyway, quick example. Thanks a lot, Sean. I appreciate that. Uh, Matt, do you need the uh, screen or are you good? I'm good, Roger. Thanks. Okay. 
Oh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm the ma engineering manager for RV Woodcraft. I'm responsible for developing, organizing, and executing all engineering activities here at RB. I set the strategic and tactical engineering objectives that include our drawing standards, process flows, and I lead and develop the engineering team. And I also manage the engineering resource so that we can meet our, our customer demands and schedules. Um, our engineering department is, uh, consists of four engineers and two drafters. We run strictly styles equipment on the floor. Our owner, uh, Ray Brooks, uh, does supply our department with the latest and greatest hardware every couple of years. And um, we're pretty much spoiled here. We all got three monitors and we've got the hardware that drives it. So we feel that's very important in today's age of multitasking and resource hungry software. So we, we got some really nice stuff here. Um, when I started here four years ago, our main engineering software was AutoCAD 2D for all of our custom stuff and cut right for all our case goods. And when I first got here, they just implemented uh, a new software. They just purchased a new software. They couldn't get up and running. And so I spent the beginning of my career here getting that up and running. Well, suffice it to say that we, we could produce custom cabinets, but it was kind of a painful implementation. Um, and we really couldn't trust the auto generation of our machine files. There was a lot of formulas we had to dig through. Um, so that, that created an excessive amount of manual checking. So that really slowed us down. And we couldn't make changes easily on the fly. So um, we felt that software didn't fit real well with RV's vision of the future. So we continue to look for a viable solution through multiple sources. Well, we discovered this new software out of Germany a little over two years ago, and we were exploring that option. We saw its potential early on, and we watched as it matured real quick into a full-fledged production-ready solution. Well, due to the lackluster results of our last software that we went through, uh, we kind of had an uphill battle to convince our owner and our CEO to pull the trigger and purchase this new software. So we did so this last October, and uh, we started a training in November. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess depending on how you look at it, our production schedule didn't really allow us to implement right away. Uh, until late February of this year. But since we started the rollout uh, a few months after training, we were, we were a little rusty getting things up and running, but once we did, we've never looked back. About the only thing I'd do different other than start immediately would be to schedule one or two three-hour uh, online sessions after initial training every couple of weeks so that we could um, hone our, our skills. As a matter of fact, uh, we had a lengthy list of questions that we thought would take two or three sessions to, 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 to get answered. We ended up getting through them all in one three-hour session. So the support system of the software, has, it's just it's wonderful. they got a top-notch crew that typically resolve our problems the same day. I wish I could say that uh, was true of our other software. That was part of the problem. What we're doing today is we're, we're leveraging the reports that, that we're getting out of the software to import data into our MRP system. So we're able to um, grab our product description, product IDs, sizes for our shipping and inspection labels. And we're also importing the bill material directly into our MRP system. And this has proven to be a huge time saver for us. Not only that, but it's allowed us to develop standards for our nomenclature of our parts. So not everybody's doing something different. And I guess most of you know that that's kind of important to our friends downstream in manufacturing. They like to see the same part described the same way every time. We're using uh, WoodCAD CAM and we use the value sets and article specific variables. And this has proven to, to us to be the breakthrough technology that we've been looking for. Um, it's allowed us to do just what uh, Sean showed us on the screen. And, and it's amazing how fast we can produce workloads now for the one knockoff types. We have a three-phase plan right now, and phase one is to implement the software as our main engineering design tool and to integrate it with our equipment on the floor. And again, we started in late February, and we're about 80% there now for our custom and our standard case line. We're hoping to wrap that side of things up here shortly so now we can concentrate on the custom side of it. So we're making progress, and uh, we're still developing standards and construction principles for the custom end of it. Phase two is this new technology is an on um, is this tool for online sales. Uh, it'll allow us to direct market to some of our select clients. And we're, we're really excited about this because we firmly believe that not only will it help drive our sales numbers up, but it's gonna make it easier for our customers to order things. And it's definitely a lot better for us to produce, produce stuff here. And then phase three is going to be implementing the, the software for manufacturing. 
uh, we, we're probably going to have a dedicated case line here shortly because our engineers right now are two to three times more efficient than they were uh, a year ago. So we're trying to tie all this information together. Now, having said all that, with this new technology, what it's brought to me personally, um, it's brought me peace of mind because I, I finally found a software that I can count on. I no longer have to double and triple check programs. I know what I'm going to get. Now, don't get me wrong. We're, we're still sharp in the pencil, and, um, but I can uh, confidently say that the majority of the errors that I'm getting now are human in nature. It's, it's, it's somebody, you know, inverted two numbers. It's not because the program was wrong. Um, and as a department, what it's allowed us to do is now we're focusing on some other issues rather than just trying to keep the, the floor fed with, with work orders. Uh, we do actually have a lot in common with uh, Kent and what he's doing, and that's why we've chosen the software to be the center of our engineering, and we're kind of going to let that drive our other systems because once we put it into the software, we don't have to duplicate information again. And so we're, we're just at the beginning of the journey, and we're, we're really looking forward to integrating our systems both on the floor and with the Internet of Things. Thanks, Matt. We really appreciate your input and uh, wisdom and experience that you've gone through up there. I know I've gone through a lot of that with you, uh, the good news and the, and the bad news. Uh, what, what I wanted to do is, uh, since I'm next on the list, so to speak, um, one of the things that I'm, I'm learning in all of my years of, of dealing with software, and actually it's not software, it's actually data management, I have come to the conclusion, uh, based on really what Kent has, has taught RSA, and that is, is that when you're thinking in terms of a long-term play, ERP at the, at the end of the list, where, what are you expecting out of your engineering software, Kent? And I'll, I'll uh, leave that, if you don't mind, I, I'd like you to answer that. Well, from my perspective, and Timberline probably operates differently than, than most people. We currently have our estimating totally uh, integrated into our manufacturing software. So they're not two islands. That is one place where it's not two islands of information. I want to be able to, to do a, a takeoff using, we use on-screen takeoff, which is extremely fast and, and very efficient, and then take that data and dump it straight into my, my CAD CAM system, uh, which would then generate a list of all the materials. Uh, it generates all of my labor, because I can have labor attached to the part level that that changes based on whether that part gets finished or whether it's laminate or whether it's finished two sides or one side or, or whatever. All of my labor values are changing based on the reality of what it is that I'm making. And then that that information flows straight out to my to my ERP system, which allows me to generate a quotation. And when the project, it goes back to, to the CAD CAM system where we're generating the shop drawings and middles. Uh, once those are approved and field measures have been adjusted, um, we're, we're straight to, to a work order. I need all of that, basically all of that's being driven by the, the CAD CAM system. So my goal is to have that all in one place so that it's as efficient as possible. Does that answer your question? It does. Um, I, I did, I, by the way, you and I have never discussed this, so that's, I'm hearing that for the first time from you. But I have a question about that. A couple of them, actually. On the on-screen takeoff side, what happens when you see something that you've never built before? Are you actually engineering it up, or what are you doing to push it into uh, your engineering package? So I have, I have two options. One is that in my on-screen takeoff, I have a list of, call it starter parts. So I can just start throwing parts at, at something uh, and individual pieces of hardware, which then dumps it into the system. Or I can take a product that is close to what I'm doing and, and put a note on it that, so that once it actually gets into WoodCAD CAM, I see the, the note and the note says, hey, this needs a little bit of engineering attention. It's got to be modified and customized so that I open it up very quickly, just like Sean demonstrated, and we can make the changes that are necessary so that it is now exactly what we're going to build. And because all the data is attached to all the parts in the system already, it's not, it's not a tremendous amount of work to make that happen. So there's two, two ways to do it. Okay, okay. And so basically what you're doing is, is you're coming out of uh, your engineering product with a bill of materials and your labor costs. What about the routings where these parts have to go? Is that established in your 
engineering product or is that going to be picked up in your ERP product? It can be done in engineering, uh, in WoodCAD CAM. It can also be done in ERP. It depends on which way you want to do it. I prefer to have it all in one place as much as possible, so I believe that the engineering portion of this picture is really the starting point and what drives all of the data and all of the system. The ERP also has the ability then to feed information back to uh, WoodCAD CAM, so it's not just a one direction flow. Uh, information can go and come between the different applications and so that things are, are in sync and, and we're all on the same page. Okay, all right. Sean, do you have any, uh, you, you, need, you need the screen back? I'm so sorry, Roger, I was on mute. Um, only if you want me to give an example of what Kent just described, how that data flow can work from one to another, I could give a quick example if you'd like. I would like, I think it's... Okay, again, this is not intended to be a sales uh, presentation, but um, we have only certain technologies that we have access to, and so here in this case, Kent mentioned on-screen takeoff, so I'll give a brief demonstration of what you can do. I'd already started uh, working on an elevation, and so just the ability to be able to go select and to be able to grab the products that you want. You can make it really pretty and have them organized if you want, but mainly it's for the ability to mark up. Uh, let's flip over to the plan view now and see. We could even click here to the hot links to be able to see both views simultaneously. So this data becomes an output that says for these different areas, here is the quantitative amount of information that is available for these. So if we flip screens over to WoodCAD CAM's interface, the organizer portion of this, and we look in our import folder as an example, we have two different layouts within this. We can click into any one and see which items were in uh, different areas from this hierarchy. We also could generate from the reports uh, standpoint, I'll just go grab a report showing some of the things that Kent uh, mentioned in this particular one. I'm going to see the, the quantities for the sheet stock material uh, for each of the layouts uh, separately, the edge band or profiles, all of the hardware, um, as well as um, if we have in this particular case, then all of the manufacturing co uh, costs. So we're calculating not only the routings, but also calculating the production times for capacity and uh, planning purpose. So a few buttons to at least give an example. So the, the, the concept, once again, is engineering is the most precise database. There may be ERP systems that tell you that, that you can configure what you want in them, but they're not going to configure down to, I changed my edge banding, I got this reveal, I got to deal with these gap settings. It's just impossible. So why do it twice? Why not have one centralized uh, data source that you can extend in the before, the how to get business, back into estimation and calculations for um, what we want to sell and extend it forward, not only to the engineering and manufacturing output, but also to the uh, you know production coach, all the management of things, as well as MRP, scheduling, planning, uh, and all of those things going forward. Okay. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. That pretty much concludes uh, our panel uh, discussion. Once again, I really want to thank you guys for uh, participating in it. Uh, Bob, I really appreciate your input. It was uh, invaluable to, to let us know uh, what uh, the thinking is coming out of Europe. And uh, with your experience, it was great help for everyone. Kent, again, uh, you're, you're kind of cutting your own path out there in, in Kansas, and uh, it's very interesting to see the conclusions that you've arrived at. I believe that you're, you're right. I, I've seen a lot of uh, companies deploy ERP systems as an umbrella, and all I hear is frustration from the people that are working under it with, a de with, with actually what they had is two different data sets rather than one. And it uh, looks like you've naturally avoided doing that. Uh, Matt, the, the, the battles that you have fought to uh, come uh, complex uh, problems and at the same time successfully uh, making a, a company functional have been amazing uh, in the past, and we really appreciate your input. Uh, Sean, thanks for your uh, explanations and, and demonstrations of the technology. And with that, I uh, conclude the, the seminar, and we appreciate everybody attending.